I graduated in the midst of a recession. <laughs> they actually let me go. They sacked me because it just wasn't working. I remember it felt like the rug had been pulled from under my feet. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Josephine Arusu and since this is one of my first videos, I thought that it was befitting that I would take you down the story time and give you a little bit more information on my journey so far. So I am a business strategist and the founder of the Arusu Collective. But as you know, everyone has a story. And so I'm going to take you way back <laughs> to 2004, where it all, my journey began. So 2004, I started my degree at the University of Essex. I studied American studies. And the reason I studied it was because I actually wanted to study a media degree. Um, I did media for my A-levels, for those who are outside of the UK, um, A-levels are, it's almost like high school, the higher end of high school, just before you go into university or college. I did a four year degree and it included a year studying abroad. Um, the reason why I decided to study American studies was because media studies was getting a bad rap in the media and um, I wanted to, do a subject which wouldn't kind of hold me back, even though I knew that media studies was a subject that, you know, you could study. It takes a lot, <laughs> like you do as much work as anyone else in another degree. I decided to choose a more academic subject, but even then I had a few people who were literally like American studies and they'd look down on it, on it and I was like, whatever. <laughs> During my time, um, studying American studies. I, I did that at the University of Essex. I loved it. Shout out to the University of Essex. Had an amazing time there. I lived on campus and during my, my breaks, so Christmas, Easter, summer, I would actually do intern, interning. So my first ever internship was actually at MTV UK and they it was amazing i loved it that is what got me the media bug <laughs> so even though i'm a business strategist i have a background in media i started at mtv i was working in the uk office in camden and i was working on mtv news so i was working with the presenter tim cash and it was absolutely amazing the team was amazing um, the environment was amazing. It just got me excited. And it was actually from that time when I was there that I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I would make notes of things that they would do to encourage their employees. I finished my internship and then they called me back the next week. I had been recommended for a paid position. So I was doing an internship that was unpaid and I'd been recommended for a paid position um, which was more admin work and I was really excited just to be back in the same environment and one of the lessons that I learned when I was I think I was around 18 years old was that I need to follow my passion which pays <laughs> um, that's important you can follow your passion but you, it needs to also pay as well but I couldn't chase money basically some people they make a plan and it's that they will work in this industry for 10 years, make loads of money and then do their passion. I'm not that person. And the reason I say this is because when I went back and I was being paid for this admin work, I remember being so bored and just looking around at all the things that I could do and all the fun things that I was doing. Because one thing that I did love about MTV was variety. Every day was different. You might be on a video shoot one day, then you might be transcribing an interview with, um, at the time, Girls Aloud were really huge then. And so I was transcribing interviews with them. And then I'd go into the green room <laughs> to film the news. So it, every day was different or I'd go to the post-production studio. And so when I was doing the paid admin work, I was so bored. 
And I remember I, um, because I'd networked and I'd built relationships with people in different departments, there were these two guys and they worked for MTV2. Um, I'm not even sure if that's around anymore, but they worked for MTV2 and they literally had double booked themselves as lighting assistants. So they asked me, would you be able to cover, um, be a lighting assistant on Trevor Nelson's The Lake Show? on MTV Base and I was like yeah because I grew up watching MTV Base so I was very excited and I had to kind of get some permission quickly quickly sneak away and I was able to go and film it just reminded me that I cannot do something just for the money I need to have passion I need to have variety so that's where my journey started <laughs> After I worked, I, I worked at MTV. Um, I think I did that the summer just before I started university. So I worked with this amazing lady, Liz, and she basically recommended me to her boyfriend. He worked at a record label. It was called Relentless Records. So it was the label where Joss Stone, Lethal B, Katie Tunstall, Jay Sean, it was their record label and so she knew that I wanted to get into the music industry and she recommended me so I ended up doing work experience at that record label Relentless Records for quite a few summers Christmases so whilst all of my friends were doing paid work I was doing unpaid work so I'm I think I'm a bit of a an unusual person in the sense of I knew from a young age what I wanted to do. I know that not a lot of people, you know, some people, they struggle with that, but I really had clarity before I wanted to be an actress. <laughs> and then it kind of pivoted to, well, I want to work behind the scenes in the media industry. And then I was also interested in the music industry as well. And um, whenever I had a break, I would do internships at Relentless Records and it was amazing. I learned so much. <laughs> Then I kind of pivoted a bit because I realised that the media, the music industry wasn't making as much money. And even though, as I said to you, that it's all about following your passion, I also want to live a good life. I've always dreamed of having a great life. And, you know, you live once and I want to live a life of abundance and enjoy life. And so, you know, I grew up in the era of watching MTV Cribs. <laughs> So I've always been like, yes, I want to live my best life. And so I kind of pivoted a bit and kind of looked more into the TV industry. I did a four year degree in American studies. That was between 2004 and 2008. Now, between 2006 and 2007, I was privileged to study abroad. One of the reasons that I decided to study American studies was because it was an inter interdisciplinary degree. So variety, which I mentioned earlier, I got to study history, politics, literature, film. Um, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. And I really, really enjoyed it. And you could kind of create the degree that you wanted based on what you were interested in. And so another reason why I wanted to study it was because I had the opportunity to study abroad. And so I applied to study at the University of California, the Davis campus. And so that is in Northern California and it's between San Francisco, UC Berkeley and Sacramento. So I studied abroad there and it was absolutely amazing. What was amazing about it is I could study any topic I wanted whilst I was out there. That year counted towards 20% of my degree. So whilst I was out there, I actually studied a lot of classes that I didn't have access to at my university. I studied all these different African-American classes, which were just so interesting to learn. And then I also learned to swim and I also did a water aerobics class. So four times a week, every morning, I would at 9am, 
I would be in an outdoor pool with the sun shining, swimming, and then I would start my day. And it was absolutely one of the best times of my life. And it's something that I'm like, I need to incorporate that into my my dream life where I'm able to, you know, do swimming outside and have the sun shining. It was just absolutely amazing. Always the best start to the day. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Whilst I was out there studying as well, I had a part-time job. So you, with our visa, you weren't allowed to work off campus, but you could work on campus. So at first I worked at the bookshop for a short time and then I got a job at their gym, the campus gym. So I studied abroad from 2006 to 2007 at UC Davis in California and then I came back to the UK and from 2007 to 2008 I finished my last year um, of my degree. When I graduated in 2008 it was in the height of one of the biggest financial crises we've, we've ever experienced in this country and I graduated in a midst of a recession. <laughs> so you can imagine there was, it was very bleak for us graduates. It wasn't the usual thing where you have a job lined up for you as soon as you graduate. The good thing about me is the attitude that I had was always, I would do whatever it takes to just get the opportunities that I needed. And I know historically in the past, um, to get into the media industry, to be honest, everyone had to work for free before they got into it. I know it's changed a bit now and they're actually paying interns at least, which is a great thing. But back then, every single person who you met who was high up in the media industry had started from the bottom. That's just how it was. And so whilst I was actually in my last year at the University of Essex, I attended a careers talk and I met a lady called Liz, another Liz who helped me on my career journey. And she, at the time, worked for a PR agency called Resonate. And um, they were actually part of the WPP um, group, communications group. They had a lot of different brands. And it was such an eye-opener. It was a great experience. I really enjoyed working there. Um, they couldn't afford to hire me after. And they said that they had the budget um, for a role that they would have hired me on the spot. Um, but yeah, I had such a great time. The only thing I didn't enjoy was the phone being put down by journalists. So every time I'd call journalists and having the phone put down, that I did not enjoy. <laughs> but it was a great experience. It gave me an introduction into PR and how that works. And so on my last day, I actually bumped into another lady who was freelancing at Resonate and she actually had her own PR company, Zebra PR. Her name was Kirsty, and she was just absolutely amazing. And we just got to talking and she literally asked me if I wanted to come and do work experience with her. So from the Monday, I started doing work experience with her and I would do that a few times a week. And it was such a, a great eye open art. It was the first time that I worked closely with a business owner and it was amazing to see someone who owned her own business. She was young and was killing it and it kind of just got me excited like I can't wait for when I have my own business. She had a lot of amazing clients and we got to go to read like celebrity parties. I remember back in that day, it was the height of X Factor. Um, it was the year that Alexandra Burke won. And I got to meet, I remember that year, there were so many talented people in the competition and I got to meet a whole bunch of them. I got to meet people from Hollyoaks and people from um, Strictly Come Dancing. It was really, really cool. It's the first time I really got to work with a, a female um, entrepreneur who had her own business and who was doing amazing and who had all these different clients. And I also had a deeper sense of what, a deeper understanding of what PR was. So from then, even though I had an amazing experience and I was actually great at PR, I realized that PR was not for me. Um, 
just after I graduated, I actually joined a program. It was like a two day program. I think, no, it was a three day program with a charity called Windsor Fellowship that helps um, ethnic minorities get into positions in leading companies. Predominantly, it's companies in banking and finance and le you know legal companies. But I didn't realise that they had an arm where they did have some media connect. So I nearly never did this programme, but one of my really great friends, Jeannie, she literally was like, Joe, we need to do this. I was being resistant for some reason and was just like, oh, maybe let's forget it. And she was the one pushing me like, Joe, we need to do this. And I'm so glad she did because that kind of impacted my journey going forward. So we did this three day passport to employment program, which is usually for university graduates. And they kind of just teach you about your CV, your cover letter, things that are taught in private schools, which aren't taught in public schools and presenting skills. And then they connect you with a mentor and you have the opportunity to, to apply for different internships. So I had been doing that. And at some point, an opportunity came up. So I was connected to a mentor who worked at Turner Broadcasting, which is the parent, it's kind of changed now, their name's called Warner Media now, but they were the parent company for CNN, Cartoon Network, Boomerang, TCM. They were the parent company for those companies. And so I had a mentor, Belinda, then, I saw that there was an opportunity for internships at CNN. And one of the internships was actually for their film show, The Screening Room, which I was like, oh, this is right up my street because I've never been the biggest news person, but oh my gosh, film, TV, love it all. And so I applied for the internship at The Screening Room and I ended up getting this internship and it was such a great experience. The team, Neil, Lizama, they were amazing. It was such a great opportunity. I got to go to a lot of press junkets for a lot of different films. So I saw the other side of it. <laughs> We'd have to go there hours ahead before the movie stars would arrive at the red carpet. So we'd have to make sure we were dressed warm and had comfortable footwear because my gosh, my feet. <laughs> but I got to meet celebrities like Tom Cruise, um, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, Meryl Streep, Will Smith, you know, whilst he was the, the gem. <laughs> Those are a few people that I met um, during that time. I really, really enjoyed doing that internship. Doing that internship, just reminded me that celebrities are just normal human beings and the only difference between us and them is that they've had exposure to way more people so more people think that they know them that's it but they're just normal human beings i really enjoyed meeting meryl streep she was like an icon and i remember when we were leaving because that one that press junket was in a hotel and when we were leaving, we had to pass. I remember she entered into a room and you can hear all the press and you can see the flashing lights. And it literally felt like a movie. And, I, and we were walking through the restaurant to leave the hotel. And she was having dinner with some of her people. And I just felt like I was in a movie. It was really, really cool. So after my time at CNN, I also did an internship. I went back to do work experience with Kirstie at Zebra PR part-time and then I also did work experience at a youth dance company and I was like a marketing assistant and so I learned different things to do with marketing there. Um, I realised that wasn't the industry I wanted to go into but the people were really lovely. I learned lots about marketing and sponsorship and promotion so that was a really cool insight. I also was interning for the Black Filmmakers Festival. Um, so I did that on and off for a few years, actually. So fast forward, I was looking for some opportunities and then I got a call from my mentor and she had a friend who worked at Cartoon Network, 
which as I mentioned earlier was underneath the parent company of Turner Turner Broadcasting and her friend was a director of programming at Cartoon Network and she needed an intern so I went in to have a meeting and it looked like great she asked me if I was interested and I said yes and so it was a six month internship whilst I was doing my internship there I came across this program called the Mountbatten program where you get to work in New York for a year and it's like an internship program they pay you a stipend every two weeks they pay for your accommodation you pay an upfront free so I think I paid like three thousand pounds but for the year and to me that was worth it because if I'm getting free accommodation I'm also getting a stipend every two weeks for my job then it was a no-brainer and I just thought why not this is an opportunity and especially because things were not so great in the economy so I thought let me take an advantage and go to New York <laughs> and I've always wanted to go to New York and I knew that it would be a life-changing opportunity now the this is the crazy thing so I had this interview and I needed to be in New York a week later that's how crazy it was it was such a quick turnaround so it was suddenly like I had to go and get my visa I needed to pack I needed to prepare it was insane Thank God I'd actually updated my boss. I was transparent. I had such a good relationship with my boss at Cartoon Network. And I said to her that I'd applied for this program that would be starting in March. So I actually, I think I finished my internship two weeks earlier than was planned because this opportunity came up. New York had to be one of the most amazing experiences that I ever did. Um, so I flew out there in March 2010 and they had two cohorts. You had people who come in March and people who come in September. And the way it works is you sh they've got they have all these different apartments in New Jersey in a place called Newport, which is literally just across the River Hudson from Manhattan. It's funny because before I'd moved to New York, I remember thinking, oh, I wonder why they put the apartments in New Jersey and not Manhattan. Obviously, Manhattan is expensive, but I was so thankful when I lived out there because as much, I love Manhattan, but oh my gosh, it's like London on crack. And so it's nice to escape it and come into New Jersey and then just see the beautiful skyline and the River Hudson, like it was one of the most amazing places that I actually lived in. I just loved it, absolutely loved it. So that was a really great experience. I worked um, with Rox and Maggie. I had a blast, it was amazing. Um, they were sales reps, so they would connect directors with projects in with all the top agencies, advertising agencies. So that really gave me an insight into the advertising industry. I would go on set, I would go on shoots. I was the office manager, so I'd answer phones. It was a really, really cool experience. I loved working with Rox and Maggie. They were like my New York mothers. I really enjoyed working out there. They taught me how to be assertive. <laughs> I really learned the New York way because New Yorkers, oh my gosh, they are like, oh, they don't mince their words. I think that that gave me the foundation to even just working in general and just how to assert myself. So I, I came back, came back to the UK in, I think it was March of 2011. Didn't know what I was going to do, but one thing I knew is I wanted to take my time. I was going to take at least two months off, two to three months, just to really think about what I wanted to do. I came back and I literally was like, OK, I definitely want to work in production. That's what I decided. I was like, I want to work in production. I didn't just want to just do any kind of job uh, I, I think I'd paid my dues, I've worked in lots of different roles. I knew I didn't really want to work in advertising, but if I was going to do an advertising, it would be on the production side. And so, yeah, I, d I decided I was going to just really think about what I wanted to do and not just rush into anything. And I went to meet a friend called Emily, who still worked at Cartoon Network. So I met her in reception to pick her up for, so that we could go to lunch. And... 
when I was waiting, I bumped into one of the old managers, Susan, who was just a gem when I was when I was an intern. She was absolutely amazing. I'd stayed in touch with her and she was always like, let me know when you're back. And so bumped into her and she was like, oh, you're back. And I said, yes. And she's like, so what are you doing now? And I'm like, I'm still figuring it out. And she's like, come work, come work here. And I said, yes, but I want to work in production, not knowing that there was a production department at Cartoon Network. I actually didn't know this. And what I later found out is that the production department, a lot of people wanted to get into it, but it was very difficult to get into. So I basically said to her, okay, I will come and work with you guys, but I want to work in production. And she was like, okay, well, let me see what I can do. Let me speak to the person who's the head of production. Literally a few days later, I received a call from who was became my boss, Lola, who was one of the most amazing bosses that I had. I received a call saying that they were actually looking for people. They were actually hiring. And this is what, like, it's... It's an example of divine timing because, as I said, I a lot of people had wanted to get into the production department and they usually didn't hire. But at this particular point, in March 2011, they were hiring three different roles. I think they were hiring two production coordinator roles and then one production assistant role. So I went to, yeah, I basically went to interview, had the first interview. It was great, was really happy about it. And then I went for the second interview. And the second interview was with Lola, but it was also with the head of production, Helen, also one of the most amazing managers I have ever worked with. Like, she was amazing. You know, those people who are in high positions they know their stuff, They're, they have that that um, authority, but then they also have that personable nature as well. They're not horrible. <laughs> like, they, you can connect with them on a personal level as well. And But then she's also, you know, straight to the point. She was amazing. Now, when they hired me, they actually hired me for the production assistant role. But unfortunately... Um, they could only hire me part-time. And I remember thinking, oh man, like part-time, not full-time. So it was pro rata. But I had sat there and had to think about it, spoke with my pastor and he was like, what do you think? And I said, to be honest, I think it's a great opportunity. And I know that they said that there was an opportunity for it to go to full-time at some point, but they can't say when, because obviously they need to protect themselves and not promise anything. I basically said, I think it's a great opportunity and I know that they're gonna, it, I personally believe that they will, it will turn to permanent, a permanent and full-time position once they see what I can offer. So I decided to go for it. <laughs> I decided to go for it. So I took the role. I just worked my butt off and was learning about production and learning about supporting the creative producers. I was working in the promo department, so they would create all the promos for the different shows. And so I was supporting creative producers through booking, you know, audio sessions and, and voiceover artists and yeah, just booking different things, supporting them with all the resources that they need, graphic designers, animators, whatever they needed. I was kind of, you know, the hub for that. A month later, they offered me the permanent full-time role, which was like, oh my gosh, this is insane. This was worth taking the risk. So that was really, really exciting. So seven months later, I got promoted to production coordinator and I actually started working with my friend Laura who was an intern at the same time that I was we ended up working together on the same team so we were working across Europe Middle East and Africa we had about seven or eight different Cartoon Network channels that we were managing we were managing the budgets we were managing managing shoots different projects it was amazing and it was a learning curve and as I said to you I remember I started that January 20. 12 and I remember being a bit really scared and you know having imposter syndrome but then I had to kind of give myself a prep talk that they saw something in me 
And so I need to believe in myself. If they saw something in me and they thought that I can handle it, I could do it. I did the production coordinator role for about two years. And then I got promoted again to senior production coordinator. And now when I stepped into that role, I was covering the Arabic channels, the Africa channels. There was quite a few different channels that I was managing. I ended up doing that senior production coordinator role for five, for five years. When I look back at it, I think I was in that role for too long. I was just comfortable. But it's okay. It's part of the journey. So I was in that role for five years and then eventually I got made redundant. And that was crazy. And it was just like, okay, what do I do next? Because all I'd known was Cartoon Network. <laughs> but it was one of the best things that happened to me. I got made redundant in April 2018. And I ended up taking the summer off. Most, well, not all the summer off, but most of the summer off. Then I started a position at a digital marketing agency and it was something different. I was a project manager. I thought, let me see if there's something different to the, you know, like just the traditional media industry. And I started as freelance and I was kind of like embracing this freelance life. <laughs> and then about a few months into it, they actually offered me a permanent position. It was one of the ch most challenging environments that I'd ever worked in. The CEO was one of the best CEOs that I've ever kind of encountered. I think that that was probably one of the first roles that I was in where I was out of my depth. It just wasn't my skill set. It was a great role. I learned so much and there's still things that I learned from there um, that I have taken, you know, up until now. It was such an interesting experience but as I told you the role wasn't the right fit for me and my skill set it didn't yeah it, it just wasn't using my my gifts I felt like I was drowning and I was trying to just stay afloat so as I told you they made me permanent and then about four I think four months or five months after they actually let me go they sacked me because it just wasn't working I remember it felt like the rug had been pulled from under my feet. I remember I called my husband, Emmanuel, and he literally was like, where are you? And I was like, I've just left. He's like, okay, come and meet me. Because my state of mind, I can't even tell you. I, I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that I would have been sacked from a job because I know my work ethic, ethic and I work hard and I just never, like redundancy I can cope with, but to be sacked, it was a shock to the system, but it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. So I left there and literally now it's like, okay, what do I do? It's crazy because there were some really great aspects, like my the clients loved me, clients absolutely loved me and that kind of interpersonal relationship was, was great my communication with clients, they loved me. So that wasn't the issue. It was just other different parts of the role, which just didn't work out. After I left that company, I literally was just like, okay, maybe let's try and look for another production role. Because production is kind of like project management, but it's to do with TV, film, you know, that creative side. So I decided to start applying for jobs again. And about three to four months later, I got a job as a production manager at a children's educational app. And this was kind of cool because I have I had always worked at networks. I'd always worked with cable companies and, you know, for television. And so it was cool to kind of work in production, but for an app um, and just see how that works. And so I started working there and this was in 2019, July 2019. And it was a one year maternity contract. So I decided to do this well, one year maternity contract for production. And I actually loved working in a WeWork. It was during this time that that desire the burning desire now for me to have my own business was really ramping up. What I loved about working in the 
we work is they also have booths so during my lunch break I would go and do stuff to do with business things and you it was just like amazing to be in an environment of all these different entrepreneurs and these different s- small business owners and so I think that being there really did whet my appetite <laughs> for entrepreneurship March 2020, so this is the year of COVID, I was furloughed and that was a blessing in disguise. It was the best thing that ever happened to me because I still got a paycheck. Um, Even though it was reduced slightly, I still got a paycheck and I didn't even have to work. So I was furloughed from March until July, which was the end of my contract, which is exactly what I wanted because that's you know, obviously when I was going to be working there until. I think February that year, I had started really being serious about looking into getting a side hustle. I wanted to start a virtual assistant role, like a VA business. And I reached out to two of my friends and I asked them, one of them in extra, another friend, Ophelia, and asked them if they knew anyone who was in the business space, who needed a VA. Because I'd actually wanted to start a VA business the year before, but had had some bad experiences using some platforms where they were people who weren't actually legit. So I basically decided, let me start with my network. So I knew about kind of building a business with your network before anyone taught me this. So I just asked them. And both of them actually came back. One, Ophelia came back with someone and connected me with someone where it didn't work out, but we had a few rounds of like discussions. And then Maneksha said, actually, I need someone my in my own business. So I was like, great. Started in June 2020. And by the third week of June, she connected me with another person, Fleur Emery, and I started doing VA work for her. So by the time my furlough was up in July, I just decided I hadn't fully replaced my income, but I had more than half. And I just decided I'm going to go for it now for the entrepreneurship journey. I thought I had about three more years of working for someone before I worked for myself full time. But the way it happened, yep, I just decided, okay, because I was applying for jobs, not getting nothing not hearing anything and it's funny because a few of these companies then replied to me a year later like oh we want to invite you for an interview and it's like um yeah no I'm not available (laughs) so July 2020 I decided that I was going all in and the Arusa Collective was born as I said I started as a VA and I really need to thank Maneksha because she was had had been such an amazing mentor she taught me so much about the business world and I basically started as a VA was doing things with her and then she launched a Christian business membership and I became a business mentor on that and would lead also lead monthly prayer sessions as well about praying for your business probably about six months into me starting the Arusu Collective, I noticed that Maneksha would introduce me to people as she's a great strategist. Like, this is Josephine, she's a great strategist. So I asked her one day, I said, why do you keep on introducing me as a strategist? And she was like, because you are. And so I really thank God for Maneksha's life because she really gave me insight into gifts that I had that I didn't know I was aware of. And if I'd stayed, for example, at Cartoon Network or in corporate, I probably might not have ever discovered these gifts. These were things that I was doing all along. I just didn't have a name for it, didn't realise. So she told me, she encouraged me to take the Gallup's Clifton Strengths Finder test. And so I took it and three out of my five top strengths were strategic. And my number one was strategic. So I was mind blown, like mind blown (laughs) and it was like wow you know me more than I know myself so that's when I started pivoting my business and focusing on business strategy and working on my services where 
I would do one-to-one intensives with small business owners. Sometimes I sit there in my one-to-one intensives and I'm literally like, I can't believe this is my job. (laughs) So that's how I started my business strategy. Because of my production experience, I have still done production have still had production clients. So in addition to working with Manexa and Cheerfully Given and working on things from that, from a operations perspective, I also had another amazing client, Magnify, which is a magazine. I was doing a lot of production for that where I would be organising shoots and just liaising with different third-party suppliers and also putting things in place in terms of operations as well. And now I am a business strategist for content creators and creative entrepreneurs. And I'm really excited for what is ahead. You're going to be seeing a lot from me. You're going to be seeing me when I go into London for events. You are going to be seeing behind the scenes whenever I have shoots um for clients um to any shoots that we photo whether it's photo shoots video shoots you will be coming with me and you will also be coming with me on my journey as I launch my second business Grace Stationery so I'm very excited about that I hope you enjoyed this story time that was my journey so far and I can't wait for you to join me on the journey as we go forward and the next chapter Comment below what you would like to see more of on my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video and for staying until the end. And don't forget to like this video and to subscribe so that you receive notifications when videos are uploaded. Until next time, I will see you next week.